morning, everybody from Mission Control Houston. Welcome to Space Station Live for Wednesday, June 26, 2013. This is a live view inside the International Space Station's flight control room here at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. The Expedition 36 crew is busy today, uh, as well as his team down here in Houston. They're being led by Flight Director Brian Smith. The uh, Capcom, which is the voice you'll hear up to the crew, is Serena Onan. The Expedition 36 crew on board the orbiting complex is being led by Commander Pavel Vinogradov. He is there, uh, second from the left on the far left-hand side is Alexander Mazurkin. Uh, standing there in the middle is Chris Cassidy, NASA astronaut. Right beside him, also in the middle, Luca Parmitano from the European Space Agency. Second from the right there is Fyodor Yurchikin. And there on the far right-hand side is Karen Nyberg. As we talked about yesterday, uh, your Cheekin and Mazurkin had uh, wrapped up a spacewalk earlier this week, six hours, 34 minutes, uh, both of them uh, venturing outside the Russian segment of the International Space Station. They still had some uh, cleanup activities today, also had uh, a quick chat with the ground team to sort of uh, take a look back at the spacewalk and uh, talk about how uh, it worked and also to look ahead at the next spacewalk that's coming up in August. Uh, this crew had quite a number of activities that they needed to get accomplished on Monday. Uh, they pretty much checked off every everything off the list. The majority of this activity is getting ready for the uh, brand new Rus Russian multi-purpose laboratory module. That module is going to be coming up uh, to the International Space Station later on this year. Uh, it's actually going to be replacing the Piers docking compartment, which is back there on the Russian segment. That is gonna actually going to be uh, jettisoned at some point. And uh, we'll say farewell to the International Space Station. That is one of the oldest pieces of the orbiting complex. Uh, but this multi-purpose laboratory module that is coming up uh, will offer a little bit more room for experiments uh, and also uh, vehicle arrivals and departures uh, as well. They also opened up the hatch today in between the Zvezda service module and the Progress 50 that is part of the International Space Station. You see it back there. That actually is attached to the Piers docking compartment currently. Uh, that Progress got up to the station with two and a half tons of supplies uh, back in February. Uh, it will depart coming up in July and will be replaced by yet another progress here uh, in the next couple of months, bringing more supplies and food and experiments for the crew. Things also uh, beginning to get ramped up for the upcoming two spacewalks that will be conducted by Chris Cassidy and Luca Parmitano. There is Cassidy working with Karen Nyberg uh, in the Quest airlock earlier today. Uh, Cassidy, Parmitano, and Nyberg, all three of them have been working inside that portion of the International Space Station to get the spacesuits and the tools uh, ready to go for those upcoming spacewalks. The first one will be on July 9th. The second one will be on July 16th. We will have a news conference from here at the Johnson Space Center on July 2nd uh, to take a look at both of those spacewalks. That will air at 1 p.m. Central Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time here on NASA television. The uh, David Korth, who is the flight director for both of those spacewalks, as well as both spacewalk officers for each one of them, uh, will be here as well to look ahead at what's uh, on task for both Chris Cassidy and Luca Parmentano as they get ready to step outside the U.S. segment of the International Space Station. They have quite a number of activities they need to get accomplished uh, during both of those EVAs. Transfer work is also continuing in between the Albert Einstein Automated Transfer Vehicle, which is back on the Russian end of the International Space Station. That is the Zvezda service module you see there down below the ATV. Uh, this brought up more than seven tons of supplies to the International Space Station crew. Uh, 7.3 tons to be exact. You see the entire layout of ATV there uh, on the screen. The crew is way ahead of the timeline in terms of uh, the cargo transfer. They're more than 50% um, complete uh, with everything, and they're taking basically about half the amount of time that they have allocated to them. Uh, so they're working fast and feverishly to get uh, everything uh, unloaded from the Einstein ATV. They will pack it full of items that are no longer needed and ultimately uh, that ATV will be undocked and deorbited down into the Earth's atmosphere. Outside the International Space Station today, there's also some robotic activities taking place. There is a good shot of the Dexter robot on the end of the station's uh, giant 58-foot robotic arm. Uh, Dexter is being put through the paces this week. That activity actually started yesterday, but today uh, they're going to be testing to see if Dexter can open up some of the bay doors on the outside of the station's truss, specifically there on the S-Zero truss. That's the starboard truss, sort of toward the 
uh, middle of the station, but you see these uh, arms being moved. Dexter's arms are uh, fairly long. They're about 11 feet each. Dexter itself is about uh, 12 feet tall, so uh, quite a very uh, large robot there on the outside of the station that uh, hopefully once it gets tested and checks out can be used to perform uh, some repair and replace techniques of different items such as the uh, sort of the circuit boxes that are part of the station's uh, power structure. Uh, maybe one of these days it could be used to replace uh, some ammonia tanks or anything such as that uh, that the crews have had to do in the past. But uh, Dexter's checkout will continue uh, through the rest of this week. On tomorrow, on Thursday, they're going to be checking uh, to see if it can remove some bolts uh, using an, a new technique that is typically not used. Uh, and then on Friday, they will stow it back into its safe configuration, and hopefully all those checkout activities will go uh, according to plan. Finally today, the crew has several different crew Earth observation opportunities down on the ground. This is a chance for them to uh, take a look at the planet below and to take photos and video if they can as they pass over certain uh, man-made and natural phenomena and landmarks. They're going to be passing over parts of Rwanda today as well as Damascus, Syria. Uh, they're going to be passing over parts of Armenia as well as Andorra and also the Sierra El Tigre, uh, which is a section of Mexico, and also over the state of Kansas here in the United States. If you would like to take a look at any of these photos that the crew uh, gathers, also take a look at uh, what your city, your home city looks like uh, down on the ground below. Just log on to eol.jsc.nasa.gov. Once again, eol.jsc. Dot NASA dot gov. And as always, you can log on to the station homepage, www.nasa.gov slash station, www.nasa.gov slash station. Take a look on the left-hand side. You can see all kinds of photos and also tracking of the orbiting complex. If you've never had a chance to step outside and see what the uh, space station looks like as it flies overhead above your hometown, we, of course, encourage you to do that.